Internet, Big Mon D here, and today we're going to be doing something a little bit different. Usually, I'll be making Dota 2 videos, but one of my favorite streamers, Baumi, has laid down the International Dota 2 Steak Cook Off Challenge for 2016, and this video is my answer. Uh, I today will be making steak and chips with all the trimmings. I'm going to show you how to make two of my favorite steak sauces, I'm going to show you how to do, uh, do mushrooms with it. Uh, we have a nice uh, ribeye steak here, uh, I've already seasoned this, so we're going to be boiling the chips uh, before we fry them, that makes them lovely and soft and fluffy on the inside and then we cook them on a really high temperature that makes them really really crispy on the outside, it's the best kind of chips to do with steak. So we have some ready cut, nice really chunky chips, can you see that, really chunky chips. We've got a nice ribeye steak, already seasoned with salt and pepper, mushrooms chopped, uh, tomatoes chopped in half. We've got some crumbled Stilton to make one of the sauces. We've got some chicken gravy, not sponsored by Sainsbury's. We've got some milk, we're going to need that for the sauce. And we've got basic, basic salt, pepper and butter. And that's kind of... So, I'm going to show you how to make the sauces first. If we do the sauces first, we can put those to one side, you can actually reheat them. So, it's probably the, one of the easiest ones to start with. Move over a little. So, really important to make the sauce. Both the sauces contain quite a bit of milk. You'll need some form of spatula or spoon, but you need a flat end. And the reason for that is the things tend to stick to the bottom of the pan. So, we need to make sure as we're stirring it that we get the flat bit all the way around the pan. So, we're going to throw some milk in the pan. About as much as we want there to be sauce. The first one we're going to make is peppercorn sauce and we're going to stick that on so medium to high heat and wait until the milk is boiling. So one thing you should uh, bear in mind when you're making anything with uh, a milk based sauce is as it starts to get hot you need to make sure you keep stirring it and that uh, you scrape the bottom of the pan because uh, stuff will get very easily stuck to the bottom of the pan and then it will burn and that will ruin your sauce. While we're waiting for the for the milk to boil, it is probably a good idea that we put on the the chips to start boiling. These are going to take quite a long time. It take about 20 minutes to half an hour to, to get really really soft. It's not really critical how soft they are. We could just put these straight in the fryer as they are and they still come out with perfectly reasonable chips. But trust me, they are pretty much the most delicious thing you have ever tasted. So remember while we're doing that, every, pretty much every time we come back to the cooker we stir the milk. We don't want hot milk burning to the bottom of the pan. Okay, so we're going to put the potatoes in to boil. And we're going to put them on sort of medium to high heat. We are going to put some salt in the water. Now a lot of people think this is just for flavour. And it's true, a lot of people like their potatoes salted because of the flavour. But one thing a lot of people don't know is adding salt to water raises the boiling point. So it cooks hotter if you, if you uh, put salt in it. The way we know that these are done usually when you're boiling potatoes is that if you stick a knife in them, you see how that sticks to the knife? Very carefully, we'll just flick that off so we don't cut us off. If it falls off the knife, they're soft enough. So again, every time we come back, we're going to stir, stir the sauce. So we're going to, we're going to cook. Like I say, we're going to cook about twenty minutes to half an hour for the potatoes. Get them really, really soft. I'm going to put them a little bit higher actually, even if they're just almost starting to fall apart. Uh, that's fine. Uh, and what we're going to do is, once they're nice and soft, we're going to strain them. We're going to leave them to a uh, drip dry for a few minutes before we put them in the fryer because they're going to be very, very, very wet. And putting water into a hot fryer 
uh, can be quite dangerous. Uh, if we put it into hot oil, that can uh, it can boil over, it can spit at us, it, it can be quite dangerous. So what we're going to do is we're going to put them, we're going to strain them out, and then we're going to put them, leave them over the sink for a few minutes to just to get, let the bulk of the moisture drip away, so it, so the fryer doesn't go crazy. If you don't like fried chips, one alternative you can do, you can put them in the oven on about 160 degrees Celsius, put a little bit of salt and pepper on them and just drizzle some vegetable oil over them, just a little bit, put them on a baking tray in the oven, they'll cook just fine like that. They're not as nice in my opinion as being done in the fryer, but you know, each to their own. To be honest, if you're cooking a steak and you're trying to make your meal that's super healthy, uh, there's probably something wrong with you. You know, steak is not healthy food. Steak is full of fat. There's way too much fat in it. When you have a steak, you do not eat the right portions because, you know, steak's supposed to be a bit special. Once your milk is nearly ready, I'm hoping we can kind of get... It's kind of hard to capture the correctly, but you can see just starting to form. We're starting to get bubbles and it's just starting to bubble. So once the milk is bubbling like that, that's when we know it's that's when we know it's ready. Once it's bubbling like that, you have to be really vigilant about uh, making sure you scrape anything off the bottom because it will burn really easily. We're going to let that bubble away for about a minute or so, just making sure it doesn't get too ferocious. So making sure I get over the whole bottom of the pan as I'm as I'm doing this, just to make sure nothing sticks. If you notice, we're getting these little bits sticking to the sticking to the, the spatula. The same thing will be happening on the bottom of the pan and we need to make sure that doesn't happen. Okay, so we'll take it off the heat now. We're gonna lower it down to a low to medium temperature now. We'll take it off, we we'll take the milk off the heat just enough for it to stop bubbling. put it back on the heat make sure we keep coming back to stir it because it's still going to be prone to getting stuck now we want pepper preferably stuff that you can grind fresh if you take a look in the top of your pepper grinder you'll quite often find you can set coarse and fine now this is a matter of preference you can set it really coarse and then you'll have quite a uh, the odd black like, peppery lump in your uh, in your peppercorn sauce if you set it really fine then it will enhance the the flavor a little bit it'll taste a little bit stronger with less pepper but you can just keep putting more pepper until it's to your taste anyway that's another thing we're going to make sure we do so we're going to need a teaspoon or another spoon if you don't have any teaspoons left and we're going to take the spatula out the way and we're just going to grind a load of pepper in You will need to grind quite a bit of pepper in, but you can always put more pepper in if you want it to be more peppery, but you can't take pepper out, so remember that. You could, if you're really desperate, add more milk to it, but because we boil the milk beforehand, you will risk ruining the texture a little bit, but it, it's not a big deal if you make it too peppery. So we'll stick with that for the moment. And we will stir that in. Keep putting more pepper in. I like my pepper sauce really strong. Right, the milk will start to thicken as you put more and more pepper in it, but it won't thicken a lot. We're gonna thicken it properly later. But one thing you should probably keep in mind now is it's time to start tasting it. So get a small spoon. And you wanna taste to see if it's as peppery as you want it to be. Some people like a little bit of pepper, some people like a lot of pepper. I like a lot of pepper. Right, and that's too weak for my taste, so I'm gonna keep going. Just spread that up out of the way so I don't have to leave it on the hot. So, once we've got the, the peppercorn sauce as peppery as we want it to, uh, we need to start and think about thickening it. You'll notice it is going quite brown. This is, to my taste, it is very 
very peppery. Uh, if you do like a lot of pepper, uh, a lot of pepper flavour, you might find that it's better if you've got some way of grinding the peppercorns to take them out of the hand grinder and grind them in a mortar and pestle or something else you've got to grind with. Although a little warning, the finer you grind them, the more flavour each individual corn will add to uh, to the sauce. So if you grind them, be a little bit careful about how much you put in. Taste it as you you're adding in. So once we're once we're happy that it's it tastes about right, we're going to get some chicken gravy. We use chicken gravy because it's got quite a weak flavour. You can use artificial thickening agent if you like. Uh, you could use. Uh, you could also use flour, but we're going to put a little sprinkle in there. What you want to bear in mind here is that the it will thicken a little bit as it cools. So if you're not 100% sure if, uh, if, if, you, if it's a little bit too runny, you're not sure, maybe you should thicken it a little bit more, uh, don't worry too much about it because it will thicken a little bit. And if, if you really need to, you can always stick it back on the pan later to make sure it thickens. Depending on the gravy you're using, you might have to put the pan on a slightly higher heat to uh, get the gravy to sort of mix in properly. As you thicken it, it gets more prone to sticking to the bottom of the pan. So you need to be more careful about making sure that you get all the way around the bottom of the pan and it doesn't burn to the bottom of the pan. But as you can see here, it's now getting quite thick. Again, I like my sauce quite thick. If you like it runny, that's fine. I mean, this is, you can basically make this sauce have to, to your taste, however you like. I'm just going to taste that now. And that's delicious. Absolutely delicious. Really easy to make. And even if you're making it for more than one person, and they have different taste, you could split it in half, halfway through, and then add some more pepper to the second one, or you can add slightly more gravy to thicken it to the second one, just to make them all to taste. Usually when I'm doing this though, I make one peppercorn sauce, and I make one Stilton sauce, which we'll do next. And make sure, I probably added a little bit too much gravy to this. I like it thick, but uh, a lot of people don't like it that thick. Give the potatoes a quick stir while they're starting to boil away. Okay, so second sauce. We're doing is the Stilton sauce. Same as before, we're boiling some milk. We need some crumbled Stilton, crumbled, grated, chopped, whatever. We could theoretically just put it in in one block, but it'd be a real pain in the backside to get to melt in properly. You can use any blue cheese sauce, uh, any blue cheese to make this sauce. Uh, I prefer Stilton. Yeah, I've had a lot of other nice ones, but you know what you're getting with Stilton. Uh, I would urge you, if you don't like Stilton raw, to at least try the sauce one day. Um, I didn't like Stilton before I tried this sauce, and I absolutely loved it. Stilton, once it's cooked, tastes a lot different to when it's uh, tastes a lot different to when uh, when it's raw. It's, it's, it's a little too much when it's raw. Okay, so we're gonna, basically we get the boiled milk and just take it off so it's not bubbling so I can put it all in and we just put the stil Stilton straight in. If you like, what you can do is once the steak is cooked, you put some grated Stilton on top of the steak, put it under the grill for about 30 seconds on a really high heat. Just put straight up Stilton on. Uh, I quite often do that too, but I haven't done a Stilton sauce for a while, so I figured I'd I'd make a Stilton sauce. Stilton sauce is really easy to make. If you go to a restaurant and they have Stilton sauce, and it's really really runny, they're being cheap because when you make Stilton sauce, it really solidifies as it cools. So making Stilton sauce, uh, it should be pretty thick. When you cook it, it's really, really runny. But I say, I mean, it's mostly cheese, so it, it, it's going to uh, solidify as it cooks. I'll taste this as we're cooking.
Oh, that's beautiful. Could do with this being a little bit stronger though. I'm just going to get a little bit more silk in it. Probably put too much milk in this. I'm probably going to end up with way more sauce than I need. But I do love Stilton sauce. So we'll chop that up into small chunks. In the pan it goes. Wait until it's all melted. Again, you can make this with cream rather than uh, rather than milk. It'll be a little bit thicker, so uh, that one's kind of worth doing because. You don't need quite as much Stilton to thicken it, so you can end up with a softer flavour uh, for the same thickness of sauce. And I, I prefer the sauce to be nice and thick with Stilton. It's why quite often I'll just grate straight Stilton onto steak and then give it 30 seconds under the grill. If you do need to thicken it up, you could use thickening granules. We, obviously we can't use gravy in this where it tastes meaty. We could use a little bit of flour if necessary. But we'll wait until we've melted all the Stilton in before we uh, before we start doing things like that. We'll just have another taste of this. Oh, that is beautiful. I'm going to take that off the heat for a minute. Put it on a lower heat while we wait and just see how much it starts to thicken as it cools. This is the thing like with most cheeses, at high temperature they're liquid. At room temperature they're solid. So it will solidify. It's like when you make cheese on toast and it, and it cools, it goes hard again. Mm. That's really delicious, but I am going to thicken it just a little bit. You can use plain flour for this, you can use self-raising flour, you can use thickening granules, it doesn't really matter. I'm just going to take a little bit of flour, sprinkle it in. A lot of people use corn flour for this, but most flour will do the job. Just be careful to sprinkle it in a bit at a time or you'll end up with chunks of flour. Probably be best if you sift it onto the top of the Stilton, but hey, I am not. Just because I know what I'm doing doesn't mean I'm running a restaurant here, I don't care. I'm cooking this for me. I'm not, I'm not bothered if I get a couple of lumps of flour. A little bit, let's say a little bit at a time just to make it just to make sure it doesn't get too lumpy. And now I've got flour everywhere. But hey, we can't all be perfect, right? Bow me through an entire block of butter across the kitchen several times, so I think I can get away with a little bit of flour. You don't want to put a lot of flour in because flour will start to flavour it. It'll make it taste bitter. But a little bit you won't notice. You see how this is starting to thicken now that it's cooling and now that we're adding a little bit of flour. So again, we'll put this to one side. Okay, so this is where things start to get tricky because we're going to have to do more than one thing at the same time. Our next step is going to be cook the mushrooms and the steak. We're going to do those at the same time while finishing off uh, boiling the potatoes ready to make the chips. So what we want to do, we want a nice big thick heavy pan for the steak and a small one will do for the mushrooms. I'm going to put the pan on for the steak, medium to high, pan on for the mushrooms, that can go on medium. We get some oil. This is not HP honey barbecue sauce. This is oil that I've just, it's from a bigger bottle. I've put it in a small bottle just to make it so I can do this. You can cook the mushrooms in butter. I usually do that, but I had the oil in my hand, so meh, whatever. You'll need a spatula. And then we just wait for the oil to get nice and hot. In fact, I'm going to pour that back in the chip pan. And I'm going to cook those in butter because they're nice cooked in butter. We have to be careful with, when we're cooking with butter because if you cook butter on a high temperature, 
it will burn very easily. That's why you don't often cook with butter. And quite a decent chunk because the butter is not going to form part of our sauce for this. This is very rich, it is not good for you. So we want to melt the butter, we want to get, you see, the pan for the steak, we do not need that much. Uh, we don't need that much oil in it. Uh, our potatoes are coming on quite nicely. If I test them with the knife, put the knife into a potato, lift it out and it just falls straight off. So they're ready. So now our potatoes are ready, what we're going to do is we're going to take those off. And I'm going to pour them into, I'm going to strain them out first. And then we're going to leave them over the sink to strain for a little while. They're just in a bat in a in a basket. In a basket over the sink, just to strain for a little while to get the bulk of the water, just so they're not gonna, you know, just so the the chip pan's not gonna explode at us. So oil getting nice and hot now in this pan. Be careful if you're cooking on multiple rings. This handle was really hot because I'd been cooking on this ring. It was still hot uh, and I had the handle over the ring. So when you go to pick it up, it was really, really hot. So be careful when you're cooking with multiple rings. So you see how the butter, nice and melted. We nearly melted now. Let's say medium to high heat. We'll give that a minute or so just to make sure it's all melted and it's all a nice even temperature. Now, if you've got, if, if the non-stick on your pan isn't great, you will need to use a little bit more oil. But if you're cooking with a good non-stick pan, both steak and mushrooms will cook with very little oil. Having the oil in the mushrooms is more about flavor than needing them to cook. And the same with the steak. It's, um, you don't need much oil to cook a steak. So while we're waiting for this to heat up, just want to talk a little bit about cuts of steak and how much done a steak should be. Uh, I prefer my steak rare, that means it's going to be pink in the middle. It, it take, in fact I prefer my steak blue. It's blue means it's, you know, it's barely touched the heat. We're talking a minute either side tops. A little one, if you're using a tougher cut of steak, it will have bits of gristle in it, bits that are chewy. And the best way to deal with that is just to cook it a little bit slower and a little bit longer. So if you have a cheaper cut of steak, uh, you probably want to be having it medium. Even if you prefer your steak, uh, steak rare, you know, it, it just ends up softer and juicier if you do it, uh, if you do it medium, because it, it softens all the tough bits and you'll end up with a much nicer steak. So although I prefer my steaks rare, and even with a slightly tougher cut, I will have it rare. Uh, it's just worth bearing in mind, if you usually have a rare steak, you might want to try if you have a sirloin or anything cheaper, like a rump. Uh, try it, try it medium. Uh, you'll find it, it does soften it well. With the really tender cuts like, uh, like ribeye and like fillet, you pretty much eat a steak raw. <laughs> I know that probably puts a lot of you off, but you probably could. So we are going to put the mushrooms in, this pan is, the butter's all nicely melted. We're going to put the mushrooms in now. Make sure they're all in the pan. These are going to cook quite slowly. We're going to give them a minute or so just to make sure they're warm. Uh, the butter will eventually sort of boil off, but we'll give them a couple of minutes before we put, actually put the steak in because the steak is only going to take about a minute. Well, my steak is going to take about a minute. When you are cooking the steak, as most of you probably know, you have to let steak rest. The reason we let it rest is, uh, it, if you cut it immediately, all the juices will come out of the steak and you'll lose a lot of the tenderness, a lot of the juiciness, a lot of the flavor. If you let it cool first, when you cut into it, all the juices will stay in the steak. It'll be a much, much tastier, much juicier steak. So we'll just make sure these are Covered in the butter. We're going to almost make a sauce with the butter and with some milk. It's not a very saucy dish the way I do my mushrooms. We could just straight up fry these. 
Uh, but I like to sort of do a little bit of sauce with some some butter and some uh, some milk. We can, if we want to, we can salt and pepper these for flavour. If you like that sort of thing, we could crush a couple of cloves of garlic uh, and cook them now with it. If we want sort of garlic mushrooms, um, I prefer them as is. Well, that's not quite true. Sometimes I'd like garlic mushrooms, but uh, but not right now. For full disclosure, I did add a little bit of milk to the peppercorn sauce just to thin it down a bit. And you'll probably want to stir your peppercorn sauce as it's cooling or it will get a skin on top. I've stirred this one. You can see it's still almost got a skin on it. Uh, I've known some people like the skin. So ask ask your guests. But, you know, each to their own. Okay, so you can see the, uh, the mushrooms, the butter in, in here is starting to, starting to bubble away now. And we want to start cooking the steak about when uh, the mushrooms are starting almost to go a sort of darker colour. Not quite when they're browning yet, when they're not quite white anymore. That's when we want to start cooking our steak. And bear in mind, we're going to rest our steak. We rest the steak for at least three minutes. You always rest the steak for at least three minutes, preferably five minutes. If you've got a big chunky joint of beef, uh, probably like 15 to 20 minutes. When you do that in a restaurant, they'll probably rest it on a, on a hot plate so it doesn't go completely cold if you leave it a bit long. But, uh, but I don't have a hot plate, so. Okay, so we're going to put the steak in now. You see, I already have seasoned the top side. And so what we're going to do, we're going to put the seasoned side down. I'm going to rinse the meat juice off my fingers. And we're going to get the salt and the pepper. And we're going to season the other side. If you like, if you really like salt and pepper, feel free to put loads of this on. But a good steak, you don't need that much seasoning, just a little bit of seasoning is enough. Once we've done that, we're going to put a timer on for about a minute. In fact, the timer isn't strictly necessary because you can see when a steak's done, with a thick, particularly with a thick cut. I mean, you can see, if I push that back a little, You can see how red it is when the you'll slowly see the brown working its way through and then we'll flip the steak. Uh, it does tend to brown on the edges a little bit faster but uh, when it's brown on the outside all the way that's sort of a medium rare steak easily. Well it is with one this thick anyway. If you've got a thin steak uh, you probably don't want to cook it quite that long. You always want a thick steak though because when it's thicker it ends up juicier when it's cooked. Right, we're not going to cook the chips until we take the steak off, but we do want the uh, the chip pan on a really high heat. So if you haven't already put the chip pan on, uh, you want it on about 170 to 190 degrees. Okay, there's the alarm going for our one minute mark for our steak. So now we're going to flip the steak. Notice we've got a nice brownish char, you can see the way the brown has made its way part way through the steak. And we're going to set another minute timer. Now with steak, it's not like chicken. You can't catch anything nasty from steak by eating the meat. It needs to be cooked on the outside, but once it's cooked on the outside, it's safe to eat. So, uh, how rare it isn't just about flavor to some people. They think if it's, like not, if it's red, it's not cooked enough and it's gonna hurt them. But, um, 
That's not really the case. You could pretty much eat a steak raw with modern hygiene standards. You cook it on the outside in case it's been handled uh, and it's not clean. <laughs> but with modern hygiene standards, that's not really an issue. If we get a really thick steak like this and you want it rare though, what you're going to have to do is sear the, the edges. So our alarm's going off. We've now had a minute either side. So what we need to do now is we need to sear the outside of the steak. And you see how the brown has made its way almost all the way through. But because I like my steaks blue, uh, we need to, I need to make sure the edges are seared. So what we're going to do is we're going to pick the steak up and just rest it on its edges. This will take like 20 seconds on each edge. Bear in mind you might have more than four edges because steaks are a pain in the backside and they are not nice and square. So we just make sure we're not missing any bits. Okay, so at this point, if you do want your steak done a little bit more, you like it medium, whatever, you can just put it back, give it another minute, uh, about another minute either side and you'll end up with a medium steak. If you want well done, you want about three minutes either side, but keep turning it as you go uh, so that it cooks evenly. So right now, I'm, I'm happy with how cooked this steak is for my taste, so I'm going to take it off the heat. And I'm going to start, start it resting. I'm going to set a five minute timer so I know when it's rested. But now that I've taken it off, I'm going to start on the chip. So we'll just bring the camera over. Because I want to show you something important here. Now these are really wet chips. Ignore all the beer cans. They're not, they're there for an experiment. Right, so we're going to put this in slowly and you'll see it starts sizzling. Don't be afraid of the sizzling. Just lift it back up if it starts sizzling too much. So we lower it down slowly, a bit at a time. If it starts bubbling too much, we lift it back out. Do not be afraid, because if you're putting it in slowly, the, um, the bubbling will come on slowly. But There we go. You see, it can come a little way up the chip pan. Don't worry about that. If your chip pan isn't overfilled, it will be fine. They're going to take about three minutes on a high heat. So in the meantime, we'll come over and finish our mushrooms. Like I say, I do often do these with a dash of milk to make the sauce. Because often all the juices from the mushrooms will go out into the pan and what we can do is we can put a splash of milk in. Maybe a little bit more. We can blast this up to a sort of higher heat now. Make sure it all mixes in. We need to boil off the milk now. Or almost boil off the milk. So that's on a higher heat. While that's cooking, we're going to get our tomatoes. We're going to put the tomatoes with the, uh, the inside of the fruit up first. We're going to put these in the pan. They can go in the pan the steak was cooked, cooked in. See how the, uh, the milk is already almost boiling off, but it's binding the butter into a sauce with all the juices that come out and all the flavour and the juices from the mushrooms. Gonna get something to serve my Stilton sauce in. Because I'm not gonna just put it straight on the steak. I would normally put it straight on the steak, but because I've got peppercorn sauce today as well, I'm going to have something to put both sauces in. The peppercorn can stay in its, um, in its little bowl. But we get something to serve the stilton in, I think. We've got quite a bit of Stilton. I'm going to come back to this Stilton later and store it. 
Okay, as the, the butter is starting to dry up and burn to the pan and the milk, that's when we take it off the heat, that's when these are done. See that? A little bit buttery. I'm going to serve these with the steak now. Uh, use a spatula with a little bit of a hole in so you can strain some of the butter out as you're serving them. It is getting a little bit smoky in here now. Put that to one side. I'm going to turn my uh, tomatoes over. They need about a minute or so either side. A little bit burnt that one, but yeah, I'm not that big a fan of tomatoes personally. I usually make these. You know, just, it just seems right with steak. Whenever you go and have a steak somewhere, a posh restaurant. It's probably a little bit too high for tomatoes, but left it on the heat, I was cooking the steak up. When you go to a posh restaurant, they serve it with tomatoes, and even though I'm not the biggest fan, it just seems right to have tomatoes, tomatoes with it. Right, put the milk away before it goes off. My chips are now done, I'm going to take them out and let the oil strain off them for a moment. Any excess oil that I've got on my plate, I'm going to wipe off with a, a bit of a bit of paper towel. Be careful if you're wiping here, it's still going to be red hot. Mm, that's still gorgeous. So my steaks now have five minutes to rest. Bring my chips out. I just move this over so you guys can see this properly. There's our chips. And we want our tomatoes with it. This is not a small plate, this is a fat boy's portion. Do one tomato per steak, but I bought this in a pack of two, so and there we go, steak. Turn the heat off. I'm going to cut into this with a steak knife and we'll see how juicy it looks. Make sure I've got a good angle on it for you guys, because I don't want you guys to miss this. This is a really rare steak. Let's get... There we go. So it's really... This is kind of blue. It's just how I like steak, but... Most people would want to cook, cook it at least another minute either side. Mmm, that's gorgeous. That is absolutely gorgeous. And the chips, nice and crispy on the outside, but they fall apart and fluffy on the inside. Best way to make chips, Pablo. So, thanks for watching, guys. Vote Big Monday. See you all soon. Bye bye.